So I have three new Gorilla Perfume fragrances here that I picked up recently. We're gonna do first impressions of these, Cardamom Coffee, Rentless, and I Am Mesh. I'm also gonna offer a one mil sample of each to one subscriber of this channel if you are in the USA, so please stay tuned. So I have three new Lush Gorilla Perfume fragrances here. Rentless, Cardamom Coffee, and I Am Mesh. I'm gonna do first impressions here with you and explain to you the fragrances and how I got these. Plus I'm gonna do a one mil giveaway of each for one person, one lucky subscriber of this channel, coming right up. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. If this is your first time on this channel and or you haven't subscribed yet, please click the subscribe button below and also click that bell icon so you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. And we are talking about these three fragrances that I recently picked up from Gorilla Gallery for Lush that took place in Dallas. I'm sure you saw the video that I aired about the event where Hal Samples, one of the perfumers for the Gorilla Perfumes, explain all the um, installations at this uh, Gorilla Gallery in Dallas. The reason it was taking place or took place in Dallas is because Hal is from Dallas and they ended the tour in Dallas there. So they had invited me and several other vloggers and also bloggers to attend the event and the uh, launch of the, the latest fragrances. There was five that launched uh, at the event. There was also six fragrances that are exclusive to pop-up shops or I guess the, the Ga uh, Gorilla Tour. And then there were like three or four concept fragrances that I think that were installations but no actual perfume was created for them. So I ended up with three. I was gifted one and I bought two. And th these are them, Cardamom Coffee, Rentless and I Am Mesh. I Am Mesh comes from the exclusive line where you only can pick it up from um, the, the tour or I guess a pop-up shop. But uh, Rentless and Cardamom Coffee will be hitting the shelves soon. And I figured out of all the ones that I sampled there, these were the two favorites of mine. I really, really love these. And I love coffee fragrances to begin with. And so this was a, uh, I mean, a no brainer. And it smells really great too. And of course I also love patchouli and this was a no brainer, just a really, really great scent. So let's go ahead and go over these. I think what I'll do is um, probably skip IMS till the end. And um, because this is, I can't find any notes about this one but it was a very unique scent that I, um, I, just, I just liked the way it smelled. So, and the story is really cool. And what I'm gonna do with this video is also, once I finish explaining to you each fragrance, I'm gonna cut to the perfumer, Hal Samples, who is gonna explain to you the installation and the idea behind the fragrance. So that way you get to hear from the perfumer and also from me, my, uh, my you know, impressions about the fragrance and my uh, take on the fragrance. And then you'll also hear from the perfumer and uh, also what um, the concept was. So we'll start off with uh, cardamom coffee. So cardamom coffee, uh, I think was one of the more expensive ones. It's 100 mil like this so is sold for 139. And I'm assuming these are EDP concentrations, but I cannot find them listed on the bottles. So I'm not sure, but uh, I I'm, I'm assuming they are. An interesting thing here, California has not sold the Lush's Gorilla perfumes here in California for about five years now, maybe four, I can't remember exactly how long, but I guess there was a heavy dose of something in the fragrances that uh, didn't allow them to sell, but now they've reformulated it, I think. And from what I gather from our Lush store here in San Francisco, where I live like four blocks away from, uh, they said they're, pick, they're, they're getting them here this month in November sometime, so we'll see when they arrive. But cardamom coffee, um, I grew up around, you know, you know me that I'm a Middle Eastern uh, guy. I grew up in the Middle East and, uh, and I'm, I'm kind of uh, in the culture still. And cardamom coffee is something that uh, I grew up not only drinking, but, you know, smelling all the time as a kid as well. Because uh, cardamom is put into the Turkish coffee or the Middle Eastern coffee and drank. So it always is like a unique take on a smell of coffee because it's spicy, kind of aromatic smelling. And it was kind of a given that I would go with cardamom coffee. This was, again, is a little pricier, 139, but um, 
I had to have it because it was really, really yummy. And if you like coffee scents, I think you're gonna like this one. Now, if, uh, if you think, if you know um, uh, cardamom coffee, you're gonna think intoxicated from Killian uh, because they have a cardamom coffee. Well, they have intoxicated and it's a combo of cardamom and, co and coffee. People think that smells like Amen from Mugler. I don't think so, but maybe it has hints of it. And perhaps this might also come off a little bit like that too, but the cardamom here in cardamom coffee is really true cardamom. And wow, it's such a gorgeous scent. It's like, it smells like a, a freshly brewed coffee with the cardamom. So it's spicy, it's smooth, it's cozy, and it's, it's comfy. Very, 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 very delicious. And this one, like, as soon as I smelled it, I had to have it because it was that good. Um, and I love yummy fragrances to begin with. And it's, it's great. It smells like, you know, like, I, as a kid, my mom used to make me make coffee, like have me make coffee for guests. And, you know, I couldn't drink coffee at the time, so I'm always like, you know, making the coffee for everybody. Thank Thanks mom for, you know, putting me to the job of fixing coffee for everybody. But I kind of liked it because I always liked cooking and things like that. So it just smells like that coffee. Really, really does. It smells delicious actually. If you grew up in the Middle East and you know the com a combo of cardamom and coffee, you're really gonna like this one. Or if you like that combo, you're really gonna like this one. So check out cardamom coffee. And now we'll cut to Hal explaining cardamom coffee. The show has themes that involve um, what a home means, a uh, sense of belonging, and uh, the power of relationships. And so as we venture from the checkpoint, he didn't know how to speak the language, but one language everybody speaks is the language of food and drink. And he was invited inside of one of the yurts. And it was inside of here where he partook in Manoush Zatar and had some bread and some cardamom coffee. And uh, those were the inspirations behind. So the next one that I had to pick up was one of the latter uh, installations at the uh, Gorilla Gallery and that was Rentless. And this installation was quite unique, um, but uh, really, really a great scent. I really loved it. I mean, it was the second one. I was like, okay, wow, this is really great. but. Uh, whereas cardamom coffee was at the beginning of the uh, installation or the exhibit, the gallery, uh, rentless was towards the end. So, like at the very beginning, I was kind of wowed, uh, and then at the very end, I was uh, also wowed with this one. So this one, um, oh, you know what? I didn't mention the notes here: cardamom, rose, cocoa, olive leaf, absolute, and oud. So it's unique, and olive leaf is something very, very unique. But with this one, with rentless, we've got patchouli labdanum, tonka bean, and grapefruit. So let's go ahead and smell Rentless, and then I'll give you my opinion, and then we'll cut to Hal explaining this uh, installation. Mmm. To me, it's like, almost like you walk into like one of those like hippie kind of shops where they sell, you know, like incense and things like that, because it's, it's got a bit of incense-y vibe to me, but then that patchouli kind of takes over, so it's like a, like, almost like hippie patchouli, but it's not quite hippie patchouli because I don't want to say it's bad. It doesn't smell like hippies or anything like that, but it just kind of reminds me of some shops here in San Francisco where you walk into some neighborhoods and they have incense and patchouli and smells like that. It kind of smells like the combo of all those notes, but it's, it's a great scent. I absolutely love this one. Lots of patchouli, uh, lots of tonka bean, and lots of grapefruit. And of course the labdanum is in there too, and I absolutely love labdanum. So it was a, it's kind of like a dream come true kind of a fragrance. So the price on this one was $99.95. So this one, there are different prices at the Gorilla Perfumes. So um, it, it's, you know, I guess the concentrations, not the concentrations, but the type of notes they use. Whereas uh, Cardamom Coffee was $139.95. The Relent, or Rentless was uh, $99.95. Now we'll cut to uh, Hal explaining to you all about uh, Rentless. The Chawa demanded that we know that he is not a homeless man, he has a home. He was just a Rentless man, okay? So inside of this tank, it was 
full of everything that you would have in your home, but they were all things that he had found. People throw away the most amazing things in Los Angeles. And uh, so this was his domicile. And this was like my tree house. And 17 trips back and forth, my friends and I enjoyed his home before we finished the film and before it was heisted and taken away after Banksy had turned it into art. Now the next one is called I Am Esh. This one right here, it's part of the exclusive or the not so readily available collection. I don't remember the names of these collections, but this one, I was told that this, these are sold exclusively at the pop-up shops or the Gorilla Gallery. Now on Parfumo.net, this also mentioned that this was a 2016 launch or release. So maybe it's not new. I'm not sure how true that is. Um, also, there's no notes listed, so I don't have the notes for this one, but this is a very unique story. You'll hear Hal talk about this one, and actually, probably out of all three stories, this is probably the one that he's going to uh, go on a little longer about because it's a very unique, interesting story with this one. But I like this one, and uh, I had to get that one, get, get this one too. But the price on this one was $59.95, and this is a 30 mil. I think it's a 30 mil. Let me double check. Um, Yep, this is a 30 ml bottle for $59.95. But again, it's not sold in the store, so I don't know how you'll be able to access it. So without knowing the notes, I do pick up a little bit of patchouli in here, but I'm not quite sure what it is. It has a kind of a medicinal vibe to it, and I can see why. It smells a little bit like a hospital, uh, maybe like vinyl or material or cloth or bandages and things like that. And when you hear the story, you'll find out exactly what it is. But I think it's a true, true inspiration of the whole uh, concept of uh, um, the, the story that you're going to hear from Hal. And actually, come to think of it, I'm not sure how Rentless is tied to the, to the, the story, but I really love this one. But cardamom coffee, it definitely ties to the installation, at least to me. But um, I think this one ties too. But uh, IMesh is definitely um, connected to the installation. So we'll cut to that now. Through a matter of frustration and stress and yelling as loud as I could at God about it, because I was kind of pissed off to say the least. <laughs> Uh, I contracted a hernia, and that repair was done by a mesh, and the mesh was put in my body, and then it failed not too long after, and it collapsed to my femoral artery, and had to get the mesh taken out of uh, my body in order for me to be able to continue on. When we went to Las Vegas, you can hear the slot machines uh, to get it taken out because it is a class action lawsuit, the mesh, inside the United States, and there's no hospital that will remove the mesh in your body. So if you get it, it's yours to deal with. Uh, luckily, I found a guy in Vegas that said if you bring 10 grand cash, uh, he'd take it out. And so we did. Um, the only thing is, much like Peter Parker, once you're bit by the spider, you become Spider-Man. The mesh was supposed to become a part of me. However, uh, I am now the mesh. So you can go through an eye mesh and you can smell what it maybe smelt like in the hospital or inside the surgery room, hear the Vegas sounds. So what do you think? What, do you like these uh, concept of these fragrances and the stories behind them? Uh, what, do you, what are your thoughts? Are you familiar with Gorilla Perfumes, by the way? I'm sure you're familiar with Lush. They're pretty much everywhere. It's a brand that first opened here in San Francisco in 2002. And since then it's been around and as I walked by there, I could smell Lush products that they're always smelling great. And the perfumes are awesome too. Um, so if you want to find out more information about these fragrances, please click the link in the info box. And if you want to participate in that one mil sample giveaway of each to one lucky subscriber here, please put a comment down and let me know what your uh, wackiest fragrances in your collection are. One, two, three, four, or five. Please put down whatever amount you have that you think that are wacky. And also please put down your state. This is only open to USA residents. All right, guys. What do you think about this brand overall? Do you like Lush? Do you like Gorilla Perfumes? Let me know your thoughts. What, if you have any, let me know what you have so we can get a conversation started. Also, please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.